Professors is brought to you by TrollandToad.com, MTGMintCard.com, CardToad.com, and Jiffy's Photo and Baseball Cards. Shards of Alara is here and known, and it looks extremely tasty, so have your mouse on the order button at TrollandToad.com, MTGMintCard.com, and CardToad.com, or support the show, and head on down to Jiffy's Photo and Baseball Cards today. Welcome back to yet another episode of Planes Walking with the Professors. By popular demand, a sealed deck review is here again in hope of improving last week's flawed choices, as well as showing how to adapt to a new sealed deck pool, which there will of course be. Additionally, I had never known how the new changes really looked, but as of being sent some new intro packs and a Planeswalker's Guide to Alara, I can only continue drooling onto some true awesomeness. And while I'm a little late for the party, I can only find such new items amazing. So let's draw. So initially when the intro pack was released, a lot of people had the idea of like, what? Why are they doing this? They're just doing this to get more money because it's five less cards and you know they just want to get rid of the pro cards. But then when you actually look at the intro pack compared to how it actually helps newer players, it does quite well. Um, so obviously reviewing it still seems kind of elementary, but I mean like for newer players just the fact that you uh, you get like a foil rare is kind of cool and even for older players getting a foil master of uh, ethereum is pretty cool i mean alex found it pretty cool so uh, i'm sure everybody will so additionally um you have the flavor aspect of it which is a very nice box and of course uh inside each intro pack you have the pack but specifically the pack that pertains to the shard in shards of lara so um, that was always kind of a cool idea, but then you realize, like, yeah, they have um, this like this cool thing about like um, what different shards do and uh, how different shards are set up and uh, what what the decks are like. And uh, yeah, this is obviously really elementary stuff. But then you review, like, considering bringing newer players into the game, and you review something such as like this other thing that doesn't normally come with a um, theme deck. Which I mean, they warn you about on the back, but it sounds like kind of a stupid thing because not a lot of places have starter decks or out of starter decks, things like that. So when you consider the fact that um, they also include this, which is a pretty large how to play guide. So, giving you the basis of the five colors, the um, obviously the basics of how to play, and the basics of deck building. You actually realize that this uh, intro, this whole intro pack thing, is actually a good idea. And I mean, like they reviewed, um, they've brought a lot of new stuff. Like they haven't just brought the rares, and I mean, they haven't just taken away the foil lands and the pro cards. They've also the the fact that they added the pack is like a really cool element to playing it like so you just getting the battle grace angels really awesome it's so flavorful you've got the lands that only pertain to like that specific shard it's really cool so like obviously you've got two kinds of white um as for including corset cards it's interesting i mean like uh it didn't really uh it seems like it's a good idea because a lot of newer players aren't going to know how to play with a griffin god but they will know how to play with a wild griffin so that seems like a good idea, but then additionally you've got, um, of course, the booster pack, and I mean, you'd figure that things would get confusing here, but like, really they don't get that confusing. I mean, if you have gone through the intro pack, this is really what a starter deck used to be, and a starter deck should have been, because this is really like an improved version of the starter deck. So um, I'm going to stop rambling here, because um, it's getting pretty boring and pretty noobish, and we're mo we'll move to the actual tournament-based sealed stuff. But uh, yeah, tell me what you think. Tell me what you thought of the um, content of a, uh, an intro pack if you ever opened one, or um, just the fact that uh, it's very flavorful. It's um, I, I can't believe the artwork on some of these cards. Um, so tell me what you think. So looking through, I'm kind of disappointed about the sealed deck, not because I didn't get a Mythic Rare, but because it's so easy, it seems so obvious of what I have to build, because I'm just looking through it of all the playables and non-playables, and uh, it's clear to me that Bance is going to come um, pretty highly right about here. 
But um, the issue now is I see a lot of good stuff in red and uh, a lot of good stuff in um, some black as well for the outside of band colors. And uh, we're going to pluck out the artifact stuff because we do not have the nuts uh, artifact pool. So uh, Spell Step is actually great for this format because a lot of people are tapping out. Yeah, I'm not seeing that much great stuff in black. Um, out of the multicolor stuff, I don't see that much either. Of course, we have a sigil distinction as well, so that's going to be pretty insane. I realize Ad Nauseam's uh, an incredible card, but I played with it before, actually, and it's kind of scary to uh, use in sealed because you've got um, often a big issue with uh, just flipping over like a seven casting cost spell. Splashing red for bull ceradons looking uh, pretty nice so far. There's a lot of stuff in black here. They're like just the agony warp is uh, real, really a branching bolt and the uh, Kedaric creeper I think for a fact that it has death touch is pretty amazing. Six planes, four mountains, no. Five planes, four mountains, three islands, and two forests. And I think we're going to be good because we have the Naya for green and the Druid for green. So we're going to need a little more red there. Of course, Bant searches for green, so that's good too. 